Hi everyone, welcome to my channel eShikshana. Hope all you are doing well. In this video, we will discuss about number system and how they denote numerical quantities. Let's start the video. These are the content of the video. Non-positional number system. Positional number system. Roman number system. And procedure for number conversion. The first procedure we'll discuss is polynomial method. Second method for conversion is iterative method. Then we'll discuss some simple and general method for conversion. Let's begin with type of number systems. In our day-to-day -day life, we deal with Roman numbers and decimal numbers. Mainly number system has been categorized into non-positional number system and positional number system the roman number system is an example of non-positional number system in this case different symbols are used as shown in the table each having a fixed quantity associated roman symbol one is equivalent to a numerical value one in decimal roman symbol v is equivalent to a five in decimal Roman symbol X is equivalent to 10 in decimal. Roman symbol L is equivalent to 15 decimal. Roman symbol C is equivalent to 100 in decimal. Roman symbol D is equivalent to 500 in decimal. And Roman symbol M is equivalent to 1000 in decimal. The relative location of the symbol in the number system is not significant in determining the total quantity. The only situation where the position is important when the symbol has a subtractive property. To represent the Roman num numericals, we need to follow some rules. The first rule is numerical values of same values are added. For example, i plus i would result into 2. If you have a same numerical values placed side by side, those are added together. The second rule is that symbol of smaller values on the right side of a greater value is added to it. For example, V is a greater value if a smaller value is placed right side of the V is added along with the V. In this case, V plus I would result into 6. The next rule, a symbol of smaller value placed on the left side of a greater value is subtracted from it. For example, x is a greater value. If i is placed left side to the x, the i is subtracted from the x. In this case, i x would result into 9. The next rule, a symbol of a smaller value put between the two symbols of a greater value is subtracted from the symbol on its right. For example, x i x would result into 19 hence i is a smaller value which is placed between the two greater values and i is subtracted from the value which is on the right side hence the third rule applies here these are the rules to be followed to represent a roman numerical next we'll discuss the positional number system it is also called as a radix weighted position number system. There is a finite set of symbols called digits. Each digit representing a non-negative integer quantity. The number of distinct digit in the number system defines the base or radix of the number system. The radix point is a delimiter used to separate the integer and the fraction part of a number. Succeeding digit is weighted by the consecutive power of the base. The following table shows the example of positional number systems. Each of the base are being derived by the 2 power of n. A binary number system with a base 2 and includes numbers 0 and 1. Ternary 
number system with the base 3 and includes number 0, 1, 2. Quaternary number system with the base 4 and includes the number 0, 1, 2, 3. Quinary with the base 5 includes the number 0 to 4. Octal number system with the base 8 includes the numbers from 0 to 7. Decimal number system with the base 10 includes the number between 0 to 9. Duodecimal number system with the base 12 includes the numbers between 0 to 9 and alphabets A and B. Hexadecimal number system with the base 16 includes the numbers between 0 to 9 and the alphabets A to F. These are the examples of different number systems which are being represented by the base of a respective number system. To represent a number system is being weighted by the base and only the digital symbols of the respective numbers are being included in the number system. For example, the binary can be represented by 0 or 1. We cannot represent any other numbers apart from 0 or 1. Similarly, ternary, we need to represent with the numbers from 0 to 2. We cannot represent any other number. Similarly, to represent the decimal, the numbers consisting from 0 to 9 can be represented within the number system. Further, the hexadecimal can be represented with the numbers from 0 to 9 and alphabet from A to F. We cannot use any other numbers apart from 0 to F. The frequently used number systems are binary, octal, decimal and hexadecimal. The binary number is the most important number system in the digital technology. The digital computers or component understand only machine language that is logic 0 or 1 and the data is in binary nature. In positional number system, the weight factor is totally determined by the location of the symbol within the number. Let's say the example, the symbol 531.62 can also be expressed as 500 plus 30 plus 1 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.02. The fraction parts are changed with the colors so that we can differentiate between the integer part and the fraction part. Each of the symbol in number 5, 3, 1, 6 and 2 by itself denotes an integer quantity. The 5 is weighted by the quantity 100 and 3 is weighted by the quantity 10. 1 is weighted by 1. 6 is weighted by 0 0.1 and 2 is weighted by 0 0.01. Further, we can rearrange the expression. 5 can be represented as 5 into 10 to the power of 2, the 3 into 10 to the power of 1, and 1 into 10 to the power of 0, and the fraction part 6 into 10 to the power of minus 1, and 2 into 10 to the power of minus 2. Further, if 5 and 3 are interchanged, then 3 would be weighted by 100 and 5 would be weighted by 10. Hence, the weighing factor is totally determined by the location of the symbol. And always we need to start representing a decimal number by the a fraction part and the integer part. We need to start representing from 10 to the power of 0 to the higher position and the fraction part from 10 to the power of minus 1 to the next 10 to the power of minus 2 and so on. By the above discussion, 
the general number n is in positional number system is represented as the equation where from d0 to dn minus 1 is an integer part and d minus 1 to minus m is a fraction part the above equation is rearranged and represented in the base of the number where di in the number system such that di is less than r minus 1 and it is greater than 0 r is a base of a number system and n number of the digits in the integer part of n m number of digits in the fraction part n let's see the number conversion number is an symbolic representation of a quantity the quantity represented in one number system can also be represented in another number system there are basic procedure for conversion the first method is a polynomial method and the second one is an iterative method the difference between these two methods is that the computations are performed in the source or target number system the polynomial method a number expressed in base r1 number system and has the following form n to the base r1 which is equal to d0 to the base r1 to dn minus 1 to the base r1 and then and the fraction part is d minus 1 to the base r1 to d minus n to the base r1 which is expressed in the base r1 number system and the equation can be rearranged as the following equation the second subscript r1 is associated with each digit symbol di and the base symbol r1 in these equations is used to emphasize the fact that these are base r1 quantities the above equation can be rewritten as the base of a number expressed in its own number system that is r1 to the base r1 is always 10 base r1 which is expressed in a base r1 number system and the above equation can be rewritten as the following equation just remember this equation because it will be helpful for the number conversion the number indicates a quantity the equivalent quantity is obtained by simply replacing each of the quantities in the right side of the above equation by its equivalent quantity in the base r2 number where di to the base r2 is the quantity di to the base r1 expressed in base r2 and r1 to the base r2 is the quantity r1 expressed in the base r2 and n to the base r1 expressed as the base r2 number n to the base r2 so in each of the cases the r1 base is replaced by base r2 to convert the numbers in polynomial method we need to follow three steps the first is that the number n to the base r1 is represented as, as a polynomial in its own number system the second step to replace each digit symbol and 10 to the base r1 by the equivalent representation in base r2 the third step to equivalent the polynomial using base r2 arithmetic we need to follow these three steps to convert in polynomial method let's see an example of binary to decimal conversion in this example we need to convert 1001 a binary number to a decimal equivalent so first we'll understand that how these numbers represented in the respective bases with respect to the equation the binary number is represented as a base r1 and the decimal to be represented as base r2 and we can represent this starting from least significant bit it is represented as 1 to the base 2 
into 10 to the power of 0, 0 into 10 to the power of 1, 0 into 10 to the power of 2, and 1 into 10 to the power of 3. And if you observe, it is represented with the base R1, which is in binary itself. Next, replacing each of the number system with the base R2, the least significant bit is represented as 1, the base 10 into 2 to the power of 0, 0 into 2 to the power of 1, 0 into 2 to the power of 2, and 1 into 2 to the power of 3. And if you observe, we have represented the base R1 and replaced by the base R2. Further, 1 into 2 to the power of 3 would result into 8, 0 into 2 to the power of 2 resulting into 0, and 0 into 2 to the power of 1 resulting into 0, and 1 into 2 to the power of 0 would resulting into 1. Summing them would convert equivalent to decimal number. Let's see another example of decimal to binary conversion by following the same rules. In this case, the decimal is acting as a base R1. Need to be converted to a binary base acting as a R2. Representing 246 in the base R1 system as starting with the least significant bit of a integer part. 6 into 10 to the power of 0. 4 into 10 to the power of 1 and MSP as 2 into 10 to the power of 2. Later representing a fraction part. Further representing the same with base R2 system as 6 can be represented as 110 and 10 can be represented as 1010 in binary to the base 2 similarly 4 as 100 to the base r2 into 1010 to the base r2 and 2 can be represented as 010 into 1010 to the power of 2 and the fraction part is represented as 010 into 1010 to the power of minus 1 to the base R2. Further multiplying individual terms resulting into 1100 1000 plus 101000 plus 110 and the fraction part as 0. Summing them would result into a conversion of 246 into binary 11110110.0. In an iterative method, base R1 arithmetic is used, and the integer and the fraction parts of the number must be handled separately, and the two are combined to get the equivalent number. Let's see the steps for conversion in iterative method. To convert an integer base R1 into its equivalent integer in base R2, you need to follow the following steps. First, divide the number by base R2, which is R2 expressed in the base R1 using base R1 arithmetic. The resulting remainder is then converted into a single digit in base R2 and it is 0th order that is least significant bit digit of the base R2 number. The process is repeated on resulting integer quotient to obtain the first order digit of the base R2 number. The division procedure is continued until the resulting integer quotient base R1 becomes 0 or no further division is possible. 
So let's try to understand by illustrative method. If we want to convert the R1 number to a R2 number system, we need to divide R1 number by the R2, which is expressed in base R1 arithmetic. And after division, the first order quotient is obtained and reminder of a zeroth order is noted. That will act as the least significant bit. Further, the first order quotient is again divided by number R2, which is expressed in base R1. And the second order quotient is obtained and the first order reminder is noted. This process is continued till nth order quotient and further resulting into a no division or the base R1 becomes zero and the nth order quotient acts as the most significant bit and recorded to the least significant bit would convert the number from R1 base to R2 base. To understand these steps, let us consider an example conversion of decimal to binary. So consider the R1 45 and the base R2 as a 2 which is expressed in the base R1. 45 divided by 2, 2 into 22 resulting into 44 and the remainder would be a 1. Further 22 is divided by 2, 2 11s are 22 resulting into remainder 0, 2 5s are 10 resulting into a reminder 1, 2 2 is a 4 resulting into a reminder 1, 2 1 is a 2 resulting into a reminder 0. Hence MSB to LSB is noted from nth order reminder to the 0th order reminder. Hence 45 will be equivalent to 101101 in the binary. Let's see another example of decimal to octal conversion. 125 acts as the R1 and 125 to be divided by the 8, which is expressed in the R1. 18 to 15 is 120, resulting into a reminder 5. Further, 8 ones are 8, resulting into a reminder 7. The overall conversion considering from nth order reminder to the zeroth order reminder would convert the number from 125 decimal to octal as 175. Let's see one more example of decimal to hexadecimal conversion where 182 to be converted into hexadecimal. Dividing 182 by 16. 16 level 176 remainder would be 6 so further no division is possible hence 11 and 16 to be considered for hexadecimal 11 can be represented as a b and 6 would be a converted value to convert the number from one number system to the other number system using a simple method First, we need to represent the numbers by their weights, which is a 2 power n representing from least significant bit to the most significant bit, starting with 2 power 0 with 1, 2 power 1 resulting into 2, 2 power 2 resulting into 4, and so on. 2 power 10 would result into 1024, and further representing a equivalent digits considering only a logic ones with respect to these weights to be represented as a equivalent digits hence we can convert from one number system to the other number system let's say an examples representing using the numbers by their weights let us convert decimal to binary first represent the decimal by its weight by considering 2 power 0 to 2 power 9 hence 156 is less than 512 
need not to be considered less than 256 need not to be considered so 128 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 would result into 156 the other weight need not to be considered to be represented with logic 0 hence 156 can be converted into a binary easily by using a weights further let us see another example of a conversion of decimal to octal considering the same weighting system so in this case first convert 156 to a binary by using the same weighting system later on the converted value divided into a group of 3 hence 2 power 3 would result into octal base of the octal and starting with the least significant bet the first three groups would result into four next three binaries result into three next three binaries would result into two hence assembling them two three four is a converted value of 156 further to represent decimal to hexadecimal conversion following the same procedure what we have followed for the previous example in this case we need to divide or we need to make a group of 4 which is 2 power 4 16 would be the base of the hexadecimal starting with least significant bit the first four binaries would result into c next four binaries would result into 9 hence 9c would be the converted value of 156 Further, let's try to convert binary to decimal. The given binary is being considered and considering the equivalent weights of these binaries for logic ones to be considered and summing them would convert to a binary to decimal. Only logic ones to be considered, other logic zeros to be neglected. Hence, 10011 is equivalent to 19 in decimal to convert from binary to octal directly we need to make a group of three starting from least significant bit and the first three bits would result into three and further three bits would result into two hence 23 is an equivalent of binary 10011 so the converting binary to hexadecimal represent the binaries and make a group of four starting with the least significant bit. The first four bit 0, 0, 1, 1 would result into a three. So next is being represented by 0, 0, 0, 1 and 1, 3 is a converted value of binary. Similarly, we can convert the octal to hexadecimal. 251 of octal to be converted to, to a hexadecimal. First, representing 251 in a binary with 0, 1, 0. 5 can be represented as 1, 0, 1. And 1 can be represented as 0, 0, 1. With respect to octal representation, further dividing or making a group from least significant bit to the most significant bit group of a four resulting into a equivalent conversion the first group would result into nine second group would result into a and the third group would result into zero hence a9 is a equivalent value of 251 similarly we can represent hexadecimal to octal conversion first by converting into a binary with equivalent to hexadecimal conversion with a group of four further dividing or making a group starting with least significant bit to the most significant bit with a group of three the first group would result into one second group result into two third group would result into one and fourth group would result into one hence 1121 is equivalent to 251. Let's see the hexadecimal to decimal conversion. 
first representing 6b2 in an binary and arranging according to the weights and adding them would result into 1714 hence by using a weighing method so we can convert easily from one number system to the other number system this is it in this video thank you for watching let's meet in the next video till then bye take care of yourself and stay safe